Hello everybody and oh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week I'm going to be diving into one of my favorite niche hyperfixation topics as you guys probably already know. That's the Noble House of Black Family. Every Harry Potter fan knows that there's a lot of meaning behind each of the names in this series. And you probably already know that the family members in the Noble House of Black Family in Harry Potter are primarily named after figures from astronomy. This is the Black Family tree. My deranged cousin. I hated the lot of them. In this video, we are going to do a deep dive into some of the celestial origins of the names and shed insights into some seriously cosmic connections. Do you get it? Like seriously? Like serious? Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get started with Regulus. Although Regulus looks like one single star, it's actually a quadruple star system comprising of four stars that look like one single point. Regulus is the brightest object in the constellation Leo. You're probably familiar with the word Leo. It's the Latin word for lion. Fans of Harry Potter and astrology will also recognize that Leo, the constellation, is the same sign that Harry Potter was born under. He has major Leo main character energy. To ancient Greeks, the Leo constellation represented the Nemean lion, which is the lion that Hercules slayed in his first trial of the famous 12 trials of Hercules. As I did a deep dive into the connection between Hercules and Regulus, I actually started to see some really apparent connections between the trials of Hercules and the different books in Harry Potter. The second trial of Hercules is that he has to face the Hydra, which is pretty similar to Harry Potter 2, where he has to face the Basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets. In the third task of Hercules, he has to get the Serenian Hind, which is a deer, which is not that different from the third Harry Potter book where most of the conflict revolves around Harry trying to summon his Patronus, which is a deer. We know that the author has referenced the myth of Hercules at least once because in the first Harry Potter book, when they meet Fluffy, the three-headed dog that's, you know, guarding the Sorcerer's Stone, Fluffy is definitely pulled from Greek mythology and represents Cerberus, the three-headed dog that guards the gates of hell. In The Legend of Hercules, his his 12th and final labor is his descent into the underworld. Which is interesting because there are a lot of clear parallels between Regulus Black and the way that his life ended and that 12th trial of Hercules. When Hercules descended into the underworld to fulfill his 12th trial, he was going down into a cave that was filled with the souls of the undead, right? Regulus Black essentially does the same thing in Harry Potter. When he descends into the cave to get the Horcrux and he's surrounded by, in theory, a literal army of the dead, there's a lot of very very similar visual imagery to Hercules' 12th trial, which I think is quite interesting. Next, we gotta talk about Regulus's middle name, Arcturus, because the author of Harry Potter makes a very specific point to let us know what his middle name is. Arcturus is also a star. Arcturus is a giant red star and the brightest star in the constellation of Bootes which means the herdsman. Arcturus packs a lot of punch despite being only 1.5 times the size of the sun. To the naked eye, Arcturus looks 113 times brighter than the sun. The name Arcturus comes from a Greek word meaning keeper of the bear, which refers to its position adjacent to the tail of the Ursa Major constellation, otherwise known as the Great Bear. Where things got interesting was when I did a deep dive into the literary references of the name Arcturus, because there's quite a few. In particular, there's a very very famous book called A Voyage to Arcturus. It's a novel by the Scottish writer David Lindsay, and it was first published in 1920. The book combines fantasy, philosophy, and science fiction for an exploration of the nature of good and evil. In its time, this book was recognized as one of the great novels of the 20th century, and it was a massive inspiration for the author C.S. Lewis. In fact, it became a central influence in C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy. Because C.S. Lewis recommended it to his friend, it also had had a large influence on Tolkien. Considering that Regulus Black's entire life story arc is about the internal wrestle between good and evil, I think it's quite likely that the author of Harry Potter is making a reference to the Voyage of Arcturus by so deliberately emphasizing that Regulus's middle name is Arcturus. And then a little bit about the constellation Boötes. I hadn't ever heard of it before. Although Boötes is a large constellation, it only contains a few astrological objects. And in fact, it's home to what's called the Boötes Void which is an area of the universe between 250 million to 300 million light years wide that is nearly empty and only contains a few galaxies. So yeah, on one hand, Regulus is named for Leo, the bravest constellation in the night sky. And then on the other hand, he's named for Arcturus, which is in a constellation that literally has a massive vacancy inside of it. So I would imagine that Regulus is a little bit empty inside. 
When you look up at the night sky, one of the easiest stars to find consistently is going to be Sirius. And that's because Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. Sirius actually derives from the Greek word meaning glowing, a very fitting moniker for this luminous star. Sirius is also sometimes called the dog star. That's because of its location in the Canis Major constellation. Translated from Latin, Canis Major literally means the greater dog. And the Canis Major constellation represents the dog that's following Orion the hunter around the night sky. If you're familiar with the Noble House of Black, then you probably know that Sirius Black's father is named Orion. So the application of this information in the Harry Potter universe is that Sirius's dad literally named his son to be a dog at his feet, which makes the rebellion and running away of Sirius Black at age 16 even funnier. To find Sirius in the night sky, you wanna use the belt of Orion as a pointer. The three stars that form the belt of Orion point downwards to the left towards Sirius. I personally have a theory that Sirius's name and character was also somewhat inspired by the Led Zeppelin song, Black Dog. If not, the connection is so perfect that it's kind of worth mentioning anyway. The Led Zeppelin song, Black Dog, came out in 1971, which is the same year that Sirius Black would have started school at Hogwarts. And some of these lyrics remind me so much of Sirius Black. Like, I got a roll, can't stand still, got a flaming heart, can't get my fill, eyes that shine burning red, dreams of you all through my head. Mm, burning red sounds like a Gryffindor to me. Does Sirius Black have a middle name? This topic is actually the cause of quite a bit of debate in the Harry Potter fandom. A lot of people think that it's canon that Sirius's middle name is Orion. It's actually just Fanon. But if Sirius's middle name is Orion, named after his father, that means that his initials would be SOB, which is also very appropriate. Okay, now let's get into the legend of Andromeda. Andromeda is a name that has Greek origins and means keeper of her husband. Well, probably something kind of close to keeper of her husband. The Andros part alludes to her husband and the other half could mean protector of or even ruler of her husband, but very related to her husband either way. Andromeda is a spiral galaxy that's located about 2.5 million light years away from Earth. Scientists actually think that the Andromeda galaxy and our galaxy, the Milky Way, will collide at some point in the future, several billion years from now. Andromeda is the closest galaxy to the Milky Way and it's the only galaxy galaxy that's visible from Earth, making it the most distant object anywhere in the universe that we can see with our naked eye. According to legend, Andromeda was the daughter of Cassiopeia, which by the way, Cassiopeia is also a Noble House of Black family name, and Cassiopeia is a star in the night sky as well. Cassiopeia in Greek mythology was a very vain woman who boasted a lot about her own beauty and the beauty of her daughter Andromeda. Cassiopeia took it way too far when she bragged that her daughter Andromeda was more beautiful than the Nereid. The Nereids are the female companion of Poseidon. As you can imagine, Poseidon was not very happy about that. In response, Poseidon unleashed his retribution by unleashing Cetus, a sea monster, on the coast of Ethiopia, which is where Andromeda called home. Since obviously the best thing to do is to tie the most beautiful woman in the community to a rock to sacrifice to the gods, Andromeda's family tied her naked to a rock to be a sacrifice to this sea monster. Enter Perseus. At this point in time, Perseus just happened to be flying past, either on a Pegasus or with his little winged shoes. Perseus had a lot of stuff with him, including the head of Medusa, because Perseus had just killed Medusa. When Perseus caught sight of the naked Andromeda chained to the rock, he obviously fell in love with her immediately. So he went straight to Andromeda's father and asked if he could have her hand in marriage if he was able to rescue her from the sea monster. Very love story by Taylor Swift coded. Armed with the same magical sword that he used to defeat Medusa, Perseus slayed the sea monster and was able to live happily ever after, marrying Andromeda and also killing some of his rivals at her wedding by using the head of Medusa again, but that's kind of like an irrelevant. Upon their deaths, Perseus and Andromeda were both immortalized in the sky. Andromeda in the sky is technically supposed to be shown in her naked prostrate on the rock position. It's supposed to be an eternal symbol and monument to Perseus's courage. Although personally, I think what took maybe a little more courage was being chained to the rock to be fed to the sea monster, but I digress. This story of Perseus and Andromeda was immensely popular in his time, and this legend has kind of become the precursor to the princess and the dragon trope that we see all the time. The application of this to the Harry Potter universe is pretty obvious. In the Harry Potter books, Andromeda is one of the few family members that gets to escape the Noble House of Black, and it's because she marries a muggle-born named Ted Tonks. Interestingly, in the Harry Potter universe, Lucius 
Malfoy's mother is named Medusa Malfoy, and technically, if Perseus is supposed to be Ted Tonks, and Perseus is the person who cut off Medusa's head, technically speaking, Ted Tonks should have been the person that killed Lucius Malfoy's mother? Right? And then look, get away from me, says the snake, get away from me. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger smacks the shit out of it. Anyway, that's my theory. Tricks are strange. Level on bottom, is it? How's mom and dad? Better now they're about to be avenged. Now we're gonna switch gears again as we dive into one of Harry Potter's most beloved, infamous, controversial, and spooky characters, and that's Bellatrix Lestrange. I feel like everybody already knows Bellatrix is the Latin word that means female warrior. And much like a female warrior, Bellatrix is the chief Death Eater in the Harry Potter series and is considered to be the right-hand man, right-hand woman, right-hand witch, the right hand of Voldemort. Bellatrix is named after a star, and this star is sometimes known as Gamma Orionis, which sounds very official, but don't let the the jargon throw you off. Gamma Orionis just means third brightest star in Orion. Orion himself is described as a great hunter or as a god of war. In many cultures, Orion is seen as a giant, with the Irish calling him the armed king. In most astrological descriptions, Bellatrix is described as the star that sits on the right shoulder of Orion, which is very fitting for someone who also basically sits at the shoulder of Lord Voldemort. There are a few other interesting things about the Bellatrix star. In astrology, it's considered the navel star or the star destined for great civil and military honors. And it's been said historically that all women born underneath the Bellatrix star are meant to be lucky and exert great influence in their life. In fact, Thomas Hood once said, quote, women born under this constellation shall have mighty tongues. Bellatrix is also sometimes associated with Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. And Bellatrix is another word for Amazon, which is a tribe of very fierce feminine warriors in Greek mythology. 